Hello and welcome to this episode of In Discussion With for Pharmacy Update Online. Today I'm talking to Paul Forsyth about the holistic management of drug therapy for heart failure. So please can you introduce yourself? Um, my name is Paul Forsyth. Uh, I'm lead pharmacist for cardiology in NHS Greater Glasgow and Clyde uh, up in Scotland uh, and I have a special interest in heart failure. Hmm. And can you give us a brief overview of your role, what your current job involves? So for about the last 18 years, I've worked predominantly with heart failure patients. So I have a small team of pharmacists up here in Scotland that run outpatient clinics, either in the hospital or sometimes in primary care venues as well. So places like health centres eh, for patients either with heart failure or with LVSD, which is one of the structural um, diseases that can lead to heart failure um, after a heart attack. So for, for many, many years, um, my clinic um, team and I have run clinics for these patients. So we see them after a hospital admission and we follow them up um, trying to optimise their medical therapy, book other tests for them and try and really just to get the, um, the, the treatment plan for them optimised as quickly as possible. So um, yeah, heart failure really has been my bread and butter, what I've lived and breathed for, for the best part of 20 years really now. Now, you and two colleagues recently authored a paper in the journal Heart concerned with holistic management of drug therapy for heart failure. And that's what I want to talk about today. So could you start by reminding us what is heart failure and why does it matter? Heart failure is interesting because most people uh, incorrectly think it's a disease. And it's not actually a disease at all. It's a clinical syndrome. And what a clinical syndrome is, is it's a collection of signs and symptoms. So things like breathlessness, fluid overload, fatigue, different things. And that syndrome can be brought on by a number of different functional or structural problems in the heart. Now, the classic one that everybody understands is something called LVSD, which is left ventricular systolic dysfunction. And this is where the, the main pumping chamber of the heart, which is the left ventricle, isn't pumping properly, and that decreases cardiac output, and that leads to the, the, the syndrome of heart failure. But there's many, many other structural or functional changes within the heart that can also decrease cardiac output and lead to the, um, the manifestation of the, the syndrome of heart failure. So it's a collection of signs and symptoms brought about by a decrease in cardiac output, which is brought about by a number of different structural or functional components. So the most dominant version in the UK is, is left-sided heart, left-sided systolic heart failure, which is the LVSD variety. But that's probably only in about 50, 60% of patients. 40, 50% of patients have another form of heart failure where the ventricle actually probably pumps okay, but another structural or functional problem in the heart uh, is causing is causing a decrease in cardiac output and therefore the symptoms. So it's more complicated actually than most people think um, and uh, a lot of people misunderstand. I see. Now, your paper talks about shared decision-making. Why is shared decision-making important in the context of heart failure? When probably either of us were children, you know, the doctor probably wrote your prescription, told you what was wrong with you, gave you the prescription and sent you on your way. Um, but maybe it's important that the patient understands what's wrong with them, what the risks are with what's wrong with them, what the treatments are that are available for that particular condition, what the benefits of the treatment might be, what the harms and the risks of the treatment might be what end points those treatments might make better. It's then probably, so that's some education, I suppose, for the patient. It's then more important to find out what matters to the patient themselves. So I might say to some patients, I can offer you a treatment and that treatment might make you live longer. You'll be surprised to know that perhaps that might not be the thing that's mainly on people's minds. Maybe their symptoms are more important than the length of their lives. So maybe in some patients, the quality of their life might be more important than the length of their life. In some patients, it might be the opposite. In some patients, they might be happy just to take the risk of the disease untreated. So what matters to the patient? How do they want to live their life? How is the, con the, 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 the condition affecting that way that they want to live their life? And then, you know, what treatments can we offer that potentially 
uh, have an impact on that after they understand what the risks of the condition might be. So this is quite a hard relationship actually to build with a patient. It's probably something that's very hard to do in one, one appointment and it takes actually a relationship building with them. So, um, you know, shared decision making is actually often done best by somebody that's got a pre-existing relationship with the patient. And that's hard sometimes for cardiac teams because cardiac teams have maybe just met the patient over a few visits over a couple of months. And sometimes primary care staff like general practitioners, practice nurses, community pharmacists, we probably need a team approach to help people understand these quite complicated uh, data points about you know, mortality and, and hospitalization and treatment and risk and and that all in the context of what's important to them. So in Scotland, we have a big drive um, for this called uh, realistic medicine uh, from the Scottish government. And we have um, a big kind of uh, impetus and ethos that we should be trying to see any healthcare decision in this kind of in this structure where people understand the good bits, the bad bits and what they want. And really as partners, the patient and the healthcare provider come together and make some kind of joint decision. They think that is actually really what the patient wants. At the end of the day, if the patient wants the treatment, they want it. If they don't want it, they don't want it. It is the patient's choice to either accept or or, or, or refuse a treatment, but we have to try and help them understand the pros and the cons before we, we help them make that decision. So this is hard. Uh, it's an easy thing to write on paper. It's quite a hard thing to do in practice. 